Hey, everybody, welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. Uh, well, I have a very special person joining us here today. Somebody I met uh, about three years ago, and I was just talking with her before the show about how three years pass, but how lives change in that relatively short period of time, three years when you think about it in the scheme of things, uh, for some people can be extraordinarily long or can be extraordinarily like a blink of an eye. But for people that are working on what it is they love to do or love to be in the world, it seems like a flash of light sometimes. And I have had the honor and the pleasure of working with Sarah Main. Of course, you know her, you know about her book, Conscious Confidence. Uh, and you also know about the power of what she teaches. And for me personally, since working with Sarah, since learning about what she's teaching, clearly not as a student of hers, because that would take an effort on my part, like a lot of time, uh, to catch up, but to learn about what the messages are and what the precision is of those messages is something that today's show is about. But the other thing I want to say to everybody about this is not only is Sarah the host of her own show, Conscious Confidence, but she is also the author of the book, Conscious Confidence, and the creator of a coaching platform that encompasses some of the most brilliant ideas that are timeless to learn. And when I think about the, her learning and I look at the world outside, I'm very, I'm very struck by the fact that her messages of universal love, her messages of having peace, her messages of focus, whatever that is that we know about her and her work, is that that energy that creates a place of peace. And today I wanted to have her come on because I, I knew she was working on these beautiful bracelets. I actually saw them. There are pictures of when she was visiting Jessica and I, but then I, I got them. And the one that I have is, is the one that I have today. And I don't know how this is going to read. But the one I have is the leather one. And we're going to talk about the meaning of it. And we're going to talk about the inscription. But here's what I want to say about mine. I've since given one to Jessica. I also have one for Zach and Olivia. I, I don't want to take it off. I don't want to take it off. And I go to bed with it at night. I leave it on playing table tennis. And I don't want to take it off. And this is part of the conversation today. When we're talking about infused love, affection, tenderness, compassion, who wants to take it off? Sarah, it's great to have you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Pat. What a beautiful introduction. <laughs> That's lovely. I'm not thank kidding you. about it. So um, much. I've, I've got to adjust the chain on mine a little bit, but I, there's something about what you've created, not just in the bracelets, but in the book, but there's an energy of this that is so timely. I want to, I want to ask you this question. You know, I was reflecting a little bit about when we first met and here we are today, but I'm reflecting on the power and the timeliness of your message. What are your thoughts as you look back and now look at now? What are your thoughts about conscious confidence and what you're bringing forward in the world? Uh, well, wow. Uh, it's miraculous, really. And yet it also just felt right at the time. And it just feels even more right if you can, you know, it just feels so apt every day that goes by. Um, excuse me um when we first started like uh, uh, it's nearly three years ago well it's about three years ago that we started mm. talking and yeah. then I started my podcast about two and a half years ago and in that time I honestly 
I knew there was something there and I was working on bringing something forward, but it wasn't clear what it was. I certainly didn't think that Sanskrit would be front and centre. And I really, the uh, you and the publishers of my book, really, they, you all said, and the publishers said, we want the Sanskrit. And to me, Sanskrit was just sort of part of the landscape for me. You know, I've grown up with it. So I thought, okay, yeah. Um, and it was kind of there, sort of in the background, really. But as we went forward, I just got more and more feedback saying, we want the Sanskrit, we want the Sanskrit. And so to put the Sanskrit front and centre and build everything else out from there, um, and that was the big shift, certainly with getting the book together, because honestly, three years ago, I didn't know I would be publishing a book. <laughs> then, you know, now I've got a book, right? Um, and, you know, that process in itself, uh, and, you know, you have been so integral to that, Dr. Pat, you know, you just right from the get go, you said to me, there's a book in this. I said, okay. <laughs> you know, and you... I mean, my part was just saying yes at each point, yes, 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 and then seeing how that would flow out. But when I really got the, the sense of putting and, and the message to put the Sanskrit front and centre and build it all out from there, just was like taking the same material and rejigging it, uh, turning the volume up on certain things, you know, it wasn't like radically rewriting, it was just the emphasis. Right. And that seemed to just open up this super highway of energy and then it started flowing out. And what I find now, having written the book, um, I found that really what's coming forward now is, is themes each month actually on all these great qualities. Um, and from a Sanskrit point of view, these qualities are like mighty powers. They're yeah. not, they're mighty energies. They're not just nice concepts. They're actually mighty energies. They're a living and alive thing. And so I've done a whole theme on love, on prema, mm. one on kshama, which is running at the moment on patience, which, and what Sanskrit says about that. And then there's a new one I'm working on for next month on balam, on strength and resilience. And these mighty powers, I mean, we're giving expression to them every single day in everything that we do. But are we doing it consciously or unconsciously? And if it's unconscious, then any we can be giving expression to anything because we don't know, we're unconscious. Whereas to consciously, in this case, say, be reminded and stay in memory of love and the power of love and what Sanskrit says about love and the universal power of pure love to stay in memory of that. I'm so touched that you say you don't want to take it off. I don't. That, it's these uh, bracelets, you know, something like that. We need the support of our memory because it's so easy to get distracted and absorbed in what we're doing. And we start thinking about something else and then something, you know, makes us angry or we're annoyed about something or we feel down about something. And then that energy is infused into everything that we do. So if we keep our memory, say, on prema, on pure love, pure universal love, I think that word universal is very important um, because it's not just individual romantic style love. This is universal love, which is for all people all times, all places. And that's how Sanskrit views love. End of, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I was, uh, I, w I wanted to say to everyone here that um, I still think I have the book for you to write. And I've said this to you a million times, right? <laughs> um, because I'm in, because for me, you know, I'm the person that I go back in my life and I look at what I've been drawn to at a very young age, not knowing what I know now. And I know enough about Sanskrit to talk about it. But there has always been for me in my life, there's been, let's just call it an attraction for lack yeah. of a better word. And, and I noticed this at a very young age, albeit I didn't know what it was. And I think I shared this with you that, um, you know, 
I sat down to get a come to Seattle, great tattoo people here. And I sat down to get this, to get this done. And lo and behold, never have been able to do that because I'm allergic to it. But what I've noticed now in cultures all over the world, their draw and attraction mm. to the symbolism and the, the, how do you call it, timeless nature yeah. of the writing, the timeless nature of the message. Yeah. It's, it, it is almost as if people cannot be without it, Sarah. I yeah. mean, you know, I, I know I refer to pop culture, but who would ever think, though, that something as timeless as this and sacred as this would make it to a, quote, pop culture? Mm -hmm. And most people have tried to analyze this. There are, there are studies out now about this, about what is the attraction. I was talking to a friend of mine. You have to read Sarah's book. You know, you have to listen to her podcast because when you talk about it, you get at the very depth and spirit of the teachings. And I think that's what we're hungry for right now. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, a, a number of people that I know who ha have read the book or, or are reading the book, they say they find they have to read it in small pieces at a time and because it's so rich and i mean this is the feedback i've had so yeah. rich and it takes them deeper within themselves as they're reading it and they um assimilate it and then they read the next bit and i mean that's fantastic feedback for me i'm so thrilled and delighted that that's the response to the material to the book um because this timeless wisdom that's what it does. It takes you deep and connects you to yourself and yourself, the heart of you, uh, is universal consciousness. You are a limitless, magnificent, universal being. That is what the timeless wisdom traditions keep reminding everyone, keep reminding us. And they've been doing it forever because we need that reminder. You know, one of the things I wanted to talk with you about, and, and I think we might even skip the break here because I want to really bring this into the conversation is, you know, you you are addressing a sensory experience. That's my experience of this. I mm. mean, I have to tell you, it's really kind of it's really kind of funny to watch me like if I get up and I don't immediately uh, unless I sleep with it and I have been sleeping with it. But if I get up. It is the first thing I look for, right? And I usually have a place that I put it. And I'm very particular, by the way, on how I put it. This is unusual. I need to ask you about this. Um, when I take it off, I, I, most, of, most of the jewelry I wear, if I take them off, I take them off and I put them in wherever I'm going to put them, right? But when I take this off, and this is a really true story. I took this off the other night. And for those of you, I'm just showing you one of the bracelets. There are others. I took it off and I put it down. And it had to be about one o'clock in the morning. And I woke up and I immediately looked for it. And, and it was off to the side, right? Of, I, I turned my light on. And what I noticed about it was I had it upside down. I didn't have it, I, I know this is a little bit strange, but I did. I, I had put it down, but I put it down with the writing, not correct, upside down. And so I, I'm telling you, I woke up, I was up for maybe three minutes, I looked at it, I saw that, and I turned it right side up and I went back to bed. And I thought, I have got to talk to Sarah about this because this has to do with love as power love is power and i want you to talk about it because you're one of the people like me i am not afraid to use the word power i am definitely not afraid to use the word love and power together and mm -hmm. i wanted to I, I i didn't tell you about that before the show but i wanted to share that with you there was something about the way i had placed it that didn't let me sleep. And I'm not sure exactly what that was about. 
well it it comes back to that um connection it's actually a connection with yourself but the bracelet is doing its job in that it's helping you to maintain and stay in memory with that connection with yourself it's a link yeah. it's a support it's an aid um it's a prompt um and better that it's a nice prompt you know we can make a prompt like just write a quick note on something to remind us but if there's something beautiful we honor it and treasure it mm. and that is an aspect of honoring and treasuring yourself and if you'll do that for yourself via the bracelet then you'll do that for everyone that you meet for those that you meet because this we actually live from the inside out mostly we don't realize that we're so focused on the outside on the sensory experience but it starts transformation change starts from within it's an inside job and um exactly what you're saying this connection which is inexplicable it confounds our normal thinking processes and good that it does because our normal thinking processes then come into line with the, with this connection they come afterwards um, rather than our normal thinking processes dictating what we should do it's this connection first and then everything flows from that and you find yourself thinking speaking and acting differently yeah you know um and it's an, an expression of love in our day-to-day -day life that we will do things with care rather than inadvertently we'll speak with care and, and consideration to someone um we'll you know put a, a sandwich on a plate with some care and whether that's for ourselves or someone else we'll do things better we'll aim for the best um, and it can be in simple things but this is all an expression of love and care and consideration and when we do that for other people as the sanskrit says this is where the root of prema pure universal love comes from it's to gladden to please to delight they're all part of it if you put a sandwich on a nice plate a simple sandwich on a nice plate and hand it to someone with a sense of love and consideration that's transformative for that person yeah right you haven't spent millions of dollars you haven't done anything except done something normal usual but infused with love and um i, I met a mother the other day who read my book and, and she knew about the bracelets and she said i've been trying to remember to cook dinner every night with a sense of love rather than I've just got to do it yeah. and she said it is actually changing the whole experience yeah and her, her she's got two girls and this is very wow. important she's actually setting an example for those girls of how to do things and you need memory support for that because it's so easy to forget you know um some incredible things have happened in the past six or nine months really surreal for me mm. and and uh, uh, quite unusual in the context of my life or what i thought but one of the things i was really struck by is um you know people may not know you came to visit you were here <laughs> in the states right with jessica yeah, yeah. with me and um and a lot of times you may not realize how how much your work influences people or changes people and it's very difficult to be in the place that jessica and i are in and working with you in the many ways we have and not have been had an impact by your message and what I noticed this morning when I was getting ready for the show and, and the bracelet, of course, um, what I noticed is, and I said this to Jessica, and you're going to laugh. I said to Jessica and Linda this morning, I said, you know, give me a few minutes. I'm, I'm chanting, right? Now I texted you. This is really funny. We're going to have a Sanskrit lesson after this. <laughs> I've got to get a Sanskrit lesson. And so 
I mean, I don't do a lot, but there is one particular thing that I listen to, and there's actually been a video of it made because you're watching imagery move and the infusion of that. Yeah. And it has helped me during this time. Yeah. But I said to them, I, can I call you? Can we do our meeting? I'm chanting. So I get back on the call and I say, Jessica, you should try this. You should. So Jessica's response to me, I don't chant. And I said, well, <laughs> I said, I don't either. But, and I said, maybe chanting is not the right word. So it's really funny because we're talking about it. Jessica says, I can't even do OM. And I said, okay, it's more like a mantra because I don't know, I know the meanings of the word now from Sarah. And as a matter of fact, they're in the show today, which you're actually going to do. I am. <laughs> but I said, there's something about it that I cannot explain. And I mm -hmm. said, it started ever since I got the bracelets. No kidding. And it brings me to such a place of peace. And I want you to talk about this now. It's there's something that I've been missing in the busyness of my world, in the way that I go about my day in sheltering in place here of course is big in being up on current events here because i do live in seattle um but without any peace and what i real what i'm realizing is as i read your book again you have a way to bring us back to that which we now know cellularly because we were part of it many 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 years ago did you know that your work would have that effect um i think the simple answer is it's a sort of no and a yes right. <laughs> can i say that uh, i mean course. you don't <laughs> you have an intention but better that it's not um i, I don't know otherwise i think you'd write a tract you know you'd be preachy um and that's not how i was taught and I, and that's not true to the nature of the the wisdom um i just know from my and so that's the you know that's one part of the answer and um, i wish i could give you a definitive one <laughs> no. and then I, I might at the end of this this answer but um but i know from my own experience and this as you know this is an experience for basically all my life i know this this material works i know this works i know deeply it works mm. i know this is what everyone needs because this is universal timeless wisdom it's not my wisdom it's universal timeless wisdom and we're all part of it um i was just blessed and and you know incredibly blessed to be given it at such a young age and to be able to appreciate it and having grown up with it i don't know what it's like not to have access to this and then i see people i've coached people i've worked with people i was a teacher for 30 years um, and i've taught adults and children and to you know to see people without access to that and it's simple knowledge it's a it's practical it's approachable you know it's applicable it's not hard it's not otherworldly that you can't get a grasp on it's simple and practical better that it's practical mm -hmm. if it's not then it's just intellectual and there's no use in that this is actual transformative wisdom and knowledge and that's the potency and if it gets touches your heart it is transformative on the instant as you know and that connection that sense of uh, anchor of home of peace of a place to go to get centered we just all need that i i don't know what it's like i can't imagine what it's like not to have that and it's right under our nose we just need to be told yeah. and I, I i suppose i the sense i was of just offering the very best and this is how it always came to me was just to offer the very best of what I had been given because I know it works, you yeah. know, pure and simple. Well, I, uh, I I wanted to ask you about this because I was looking at um, 
I was looking, I was reading the book again and I went back and I have done a number of shows with you, even before your own podcast, you and I did a number of shows together, which was totally transformative, but it took me longer for some of it to, to, to get at the cellular level for me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, yes. it, just, it just, it was like, I knew what you were saying, especially about the fuse program. And by the way, for those of you listening, if you go to Sarah's site, if you go to ConsciousConfidence.com, um, you can click on Conscious Confidence and there's a way for you to work with Sarah, but take a look at what, what she has developed for a coaching program for anyone, anyone who wants to reach their full potential. And the reason that I'm talking about this is because there's a story I want to share when we come back. But the way it's described and the way the FUSE program is described and, and so many other things we're going to talk about, that energy has gone into the bracelets, in my opinion. Yeah. It is like in a, in a statement that is so beautifully written on this, this I, I mean, honestly, this is really bizarre. I cannot start touching it. As a matter of fact, somebody, I was doing a show earlier today, or was it yesterday? And my guest was saying, what are you fidgeting with? <laughs> and and I was like, what are you talking about? I'm not, they said, what do you have on your wrist, right? Like, like what, are you, what are you doing? And I realized that if I'm not typing, I'm holding on to it. And that's what I want to talk about when we come back from break. Because I can understand at a cellular level why me in my world and life right now, why I would be holding on to this. Why is it I'm holding on to this? You know, what is it that's happening on the outside in the world and in our personal lives? Why is it that holding on to the leather band on this? gives me a sense of peace we're going to take a short break when we come back sarah's going to talk about how the bracelets were created what they mean i'm going to tell you uh for a, a minute here if you go to sarah's website you'll be able to find a copy can can people get the book and the bracelets from your site it links through to amazon yeah okay and and all the different the booksellers um are all there linked uh and also uh the bracelets are on amazon.com okay and when yep. we come back um i want to talk about this because this is fascinating but yet your work is so transformative that things start to shift and change and we don't really realize it Sarah Main joining me here today, Conscious Confidence. We're going to take a short break, Olivia. We will be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. So great to have you here. Boy, I'm telling you, I wanted to have Sarah Main come on and join me in this because the, the stories about the power of these bracelets it's surreal. And I was sharing with Sarah during the break of an event that happened shortly after she and Gilbert came to visit us in Seattle. And she was doing, you were doing the book tour? Were you doing the? No, the book wasn't out then. The book wasn't out yet. <laughs> the book wasn't out yet. But you had the prototype of the bracelets. Yes. And I remember sitting across the table from Gilbert, right? Don't you remember when you showed us the prototype? Yeah. And I think Jessica and I were so struck by them. I mean, they, they had an effect on us. But mm -hmm. what was about to happen about two weeks later, you just, you can't explain this. <laughs> and I was talking with you about how, out of the blue, Jane Peralta calls and says, you got to come down to L.A. So that was a whole project about love and ending gun violence with love notes. And they were shooting a video. And people may not think this is connected. But I'm telling you, you cannot convince me it's not. Not today. And that really points to you talking about the power of this and the power of this and the process you went through to make it. And we only saw the prototype. And I know it affected us. Can you talk to this 
um, as it as it pertains to this fuller body of work you do? Um, <laughs> the the bracelets came to me because I had used you know something over the years to whatever I was practicing at the time to help stay in memory. It just it, it there's there's something about that physical element and if it's beautiful and, and it's it's lovely um you care for it and you look after it and you appreciate it and it it has that effect of connecting you to yourself and that deep connection and um when i started working on all this conscious confidence it, it came to mind that i would create a a range of bracelets in the first instance i'm working on a journal now as well to go with the book <laughs> uh, because that's the other thing but um but these bracelets something that brings the power of sanskrit to anyone who who wants it they don't have to learn sanskrit because if you you know my book's got sanskrit in it but you don't have to know anything about sanskrit you know that but for some people, it, it can be a barrier. They just think, oh, I don't understand. It's not me. Uh, it's too hard. I put the Sanskrit in because it gives you a connection with it, but you don't have to know any Sanskrit. And I'm not teaching you any Sanskrit as such. But the door's open. I've made it accessible for you and for anyone who wants it. And the bracelets are the same. It's a way of having that connection to the profound energy and wisdom and the potency of Sanskrit without having to really know any. Um, and, you know, it's it's something like prema, which means, and it's spelt P-R-E-M-A in English letters. I've put in the Sanskrit Devanagari lettering as well. So you see the lettering, but that doesn't matter. That's, you know, you don't have to know that. And the meaning, which is pure universal love. Um, you've already learned a bit of Sanskrit and you've got that connection. That door is open to you to this incredible energy uh, and it is transformative. You talk about it getting into the cellular level and that is its potency. It is works at that level of energy. Um, and that's why when someone hears a bit of chanting or whatever, you, it's immediately transformative because of the potency of, of what's the, the sound of it and the wisdom. And the thing is with Sanskrit, it's untouched, it's unchanged. So the the potency is unchanged, it's intact. And that's why it's the, the effect is instant. Um, and who doesn't want a, a, a touch of that? And something like Prema, um, the inside message is let pure universal love flow to all. That sounds lovely, but you know now you've had the bracelets for a few weeks. That, that reminder to let pure universal love flow to all, and I put it on the inside of the bracelet. I've got, I've got a silver and a gold one on. I put it on the inside because that message is then closest to you, closest to your heart to remember. And, um, and that is a, a daily practice. You know, I talked about putting a sandwich on a plate. Let pure universal love flow to all. Do that. Making a sandwich for someone, do it for yourself. Make your lunch and eat your lunch with love for yourself. Don't just eat it because you're hungry and you've got to get somewhere. Yeah. In that moment, it's a momentary thing. It doesn't actually take any time. You're still going to be eating the sandwich. But how you eat the sandwich, that can be an act of love. And I can guarantee if you sit down and eat a sandwich with some love for yourself, that will flow out to the next person you meet mm. uh, because that's the power of it. As within, so without. And um, it starts from there. You know, one of the things I want to make sure everybody knows, first of all, if you want to find out about Sarah, you go to ConsciousConfidence.com. If you want to go to Amazon and take a look at what we're talking about, it's also at Amazon under Conscious Confidence. So that's what you are to remember. And they are inspirational gift bracelets. But 
when you read about them and you see this, the thing, the thing, Sarah, that I'm struck by, and and I'm and I'm a little bit stuck on it. Let's say for you know, I, I'm sure I'm going to get this, but right now is it's pure love, pure. It's pure love. It's not just love. And there was something about that meaning to me, right? Mm -hmm. That hit me really. I, I mean, I couldn't really explain it. And I was trying to talk to Linda about it. I got a bracelet for Linda too. And I, I got a ton more to get for the people in the music video. Um, but when I was looking at it, I was thinking to myself, that meaning transcends what we know love is. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's the power of Sanskrit. That's, you know, all through, as you know, all through the book, I take concepts like attitude and values and focusing, uniting, all sorts of things and put them through the, the filter, the lens of what Sanskrit says about it. As you know, each chapter's got, what does Sanskrit say about attitude? What does Sanskrit say about? To go back to that point and say, what does Sanskrit say about love? Because there's tons about love. You know, you've got rom-com videos and, I, and love and I love you and this, uh, right? Yeah. I love my dog. I love this. I love chocolate. But to actually say, okay, let's just stop and, and give our attention to love. What does Sanskrit say about love? And use that and go back to that definition. Just in finding some new meanings and definitions to a simple word like love is transformative because of the power of the language. Um, and it's very important to do that. And Sanskrit yeah. is unique, really, because you just need a touch of it and you can already feel the vibrations of it. Um, and, you know, you can get about your daily life and yet you have a whole different appreciation. Yeah. Your, your world view can change. And pure universal love is present at every moment because it's universal. It's the natural expression. It gets covered over, certainly. But love is present all the time and it's better that we remember it, hence the need for the bracelets. Mm. And let's talk about, you know, for me, most people decide they're going to do something like this and they have a prototype. But one of the things that I was struck by when you were talking about it, when we met with you in September is um, I, I have the leather one, right? Um, but there's a gold one. And I, and so can you talk about your decision? And I, I know you well enough to know that you did, you made this decision very consciously, right? But tell, tell me about that because, you know, to watch something come to life, it's, there's nothing quite like it, right? You put your heart into it, your life's work into it, but then to see it come to life, it's almost magical. But you created three different types of these. Tell uh, us about that. Well, it started um, <clears throat> with, I wanted something that men and women uh, could wear. Uh, and I know some women wouldn't want a leather bracelet, a leather band, um, but some would. So right. the leather one is more unisex. And it was sort of one thing led to another. I was fun. That's the best way to just follow as the steps are laid out. And um, then the silver, silver coloured uh, polished steel band, um, those were the two and it's funny because gail my book agent and publicist in la <laughs> at, when we were having after we'd left seattle we went down to um la to meet her and i had the prototypes and i didn't have the gold one and i showed her she said oh it's lovely do you have it in gold i'd wear it <laughs> if it was gold <laughs> right there you and go. i and i hadn't kids i sort of thought oh look i'll start with the silver anyway as soon as she said that i thought okay we've got to go gold so i immediately we got back to the hotel and i immediately messaged um the people who made them for me and i said i need a gold one as well <laughs> so, but you so know it's really following it really is. And, you know, it's interesting because I'm kind of the same way. And, you know, and, and this is the other thing I want to ask you. Do you find that people are wearing more than one bracelet at a time? Because this was a question I wanted to ask you. 
Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, look, it, it varies. Some people I know are just wearing, um, some have both. And if, you know, if they go, well, at the moment we've all been in lockdown, but they, they've been wearing one in one situation with one yeah. clothing and then another with another. So they're, they're mixing and matching it depending on what they're wearing. Some are wearing them together. Some are just wearing one all the time, like you're describing. It varies and I'm, I'm hoping that I've got enough of a selection that, suits most tastes for and and certainly guys can wear them because there's a nice leather band yeah and they're very light i want to ask you this where i think we're going to go ahead and skip this last break and you know what i want to say is as always you are going to really bring the show to closure with uh, a mantra and i'm very i'm really thrilled about <laughs> that but before we get to that we have a little bit more time um, I wanted to talk with you about the message of the book and the power of it for the time we're living in now. When you wrote the book, Sarah, you did not know we would be in a place where messages of peace and love would be more important than pretty much anything. Yeah. Um, how are people relating the book to the times we're living in and how are you? How do you relate that? Um, well, to take the first part of the question, the um, how people that I've spoken to reading the book, they uh, there are certain parts of it, particularly attitudes and values, those two sections um, <clears throat> are very much coming to the fore for them because it's, you know, um, getting through, say, this long period of isolation and mm. uh, lockdown that we've all been in uh, and we're still under restrictions um there it's given them the space to really take a look at some of what are their values and they've gone back to the section on values and attitude i've had a lot of people mention that um and in fact i was interviewed on a, a radio network that's in new york uh, this week and they were talking about the chapter on attitude the interviewer was asking me about that so that's what they zeroed in on particularly yeah and what Sanskrit says about attitude so there's there's so much material that's fundamental and relevant that it's lighting up different areas for people and they can go straight to the book and read what's there and get something solid and there's practices and there's stories so there's a, a real mix of information to fill out the picture the other one um, is the chapter on alignment of body mind heart and spirit yeah and um, just the practical application of that and I've, I've had a lot of feedback about that so the book itself seems to have um, the right touch points of things that we need all the time i mean it's just these circumstances that we've been in now for some months and, and current events have really highlighted that i suppose we just couldn't see it mm. before we couldn't see it for looking because of all the busyness but it's brought us back to uh to reflect on some fundamentals so and i certainly my intention was to provide fundamental things that you could use to live out your full potential and to find the happiness peace and love that we all crave. Yeah. I mean, the part of the book when I'm thinking about this that I was going through and I was reading about alignment, um, I'm also really struck by the way you talk about fear and mm. the way that fear really can, you know, have an impact on so many aspects of our life, what we do, what we don't do. And mm. you have a very specific way you address this in helping people not just understand it, but understand how it stops us in life. Yes. Um, I, I mean, Sanskrit's very clear that in fear you'll experience fear. So that's interesting that fear is not a, an abiding uh, experience. Uh, there are times when we are fearful, unlike love, which is abiding and universal and present all the time. Mm -hmm. Fear apparently comes and goes. Sanskrit's clear on that. And... Um, and so therefore you think, okay, so the place to start is coming back to stillness, uh, coming back to the present moment and deep stillness within yourself. And there are practices in the chapter on fear and overcoming the fear shadow, coming out from under the fear shadow, 
you know, I, I see fear as like clouds obscuring the sun. With the sun's ever shining, the clouds come over. Um, that the practices uh, help us anchor ourselves and get strong so that when the fear comes, we can say, ah, this is fear. This is a passing feeling mm -hmm. and we can get through it rather than get a absorbed and consumed in it um but you need you need some good wisdom for that and you need practice and you need to practice when you're not experiencing fear <laughs> uh, and yeah. i i think that is the key too right i mean for me and by the way i almost didn't go on that trip i uh, i went into that moment that fear shadow space right and and I almost did not go. And right. <laughs> I know. Um, and, and I thought about that. And I, I just, I had this moment where the clouds of fear moved away and I yeah. moved into action. Yeah. And things fell into place. Yeah. Um, That's fantastic. But that to me is, we have to remember. And you said it so beautifully. And I, and I think while, you know, you've created something beautiful to remind us, um, there's probably a good reason on the show the other day I was fidgeting so much about it. I probably <laughs> needed to remember. Um, Sarah, I want to thank you for today. Again, thank I want to let folks know to go to ConsciousConfidence.com. And when you go to Amazon to look for the bracelets, uh, we're also going to put a link up on the website. And of course, Olivia is going to put something in the video. When you go to Amazon, make sure that you look the bracelets up um, as Conscious Confidence Inspirational Gift Bracelets. Uh, and just put in Conscious Confidence and they will pop right up there. Now, Sarah, as usual, you have a very special way to close the show. <laughs> I do. Um, I'm going to see. I always end with some Sanskrit. And today I thought the Gayatri Mantra is the best way. It is one of the most profound, most ancient, timeless, beautiful expressions of wisdom to remind us of who we are and what this is all about. And the English is body of all, mind of all, spirit of all. May we meditate on the radiance of the inner light. May that self illuminate our thoughts. Peace, peace, peace. Om Bhur Bhuva Suaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhyoyo Nah Prachodayat Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Sarah, thank you so much for today. Thank you. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning us in and turning us on. Make sure you follow Sarah. Tell, her, tell folks about your show for a minute, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, well, I've got a podcast on Transformation Talk Radio. It's Conscious Confidence Radio. So you can find me there on TTR. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well, which is Conscious Confidence Sarah Main. And for those of you out there, you could also get Sarah's book, Conscious Confidence, on Amazon as well. Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Oh, you bet. Olivia, thank you for pushing all the right buttons. And I want to thank all of you out there because this is really a time to remember. And that is the most important aspect of what I've come to know these days. And it is in that special, special message of pure love from Sarah and from Sanskrit. Thank you all. We'll see you next time.